What if I told you that there were custom cycle shaders available out there on the internet? Sounds crazy, right? But it's true. Let's check them out. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of CGC Weekly here on the CG Cookie Blender Training YouTube channel. This week we're going to be taking an inside look at OSL shaders and how you can use them in Blender. OSL stands for Open Shading Language, and it's basically a programming language that allows you to create your own custom cycle shaders. Actually, it works in a few different softwares as well. I believe Maya is one of them, and there's two or three others uh, that OSL shaders will work in, and they're cross-compatible, which is kind of cool, actually. You don't see much cross-compatibility uh, between softwares anymore. Now, unfortunately, we aren't going to be making our own shaders in this video because well, learning OSL is basically learning an entire programming language, but we will be going over a few places where you can find OSL shaders and how we can use them in Blender. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and experiment with some of these shaders. Alright, so the nice thing about OSL shaders is that there are tons of repositories with just a bunch of different OSL shaders in them. So if I just look up OS, you can see I googled this before, OSL shader collection or OSL shader repository, we get a ton of different things. There you see Arnoldpedia, so Arnold's render is another one that uh, supports that. But you can see GitHub, 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 um, all sorts of different things that do support these. And you can see I clicked on two of these. I find this third link to be uh, pretty good because it has a lot of different things. It's a good example of what OSL shaders can do. I'll make sure there's a link down in the description. So if you guys want to actually visit this exact GitHub page and download these shaders, you can. Uh, so there's a lot of different things here. Uh, I'm just going to focus on the shaders.zip file in here and click download um, because you can see I've downloaded it before actually because, you know, I recite these videos a lot. Um, and we can exit out of that. And oh gosh, I am I am exploding things. Uh, we can extract the shaders folder from the shaders.zip file. And inside of this folder, uh, inside of this folder here, you can see we have a bunch of blend files, we have a bunch of OSL files, and then we have a couple other things like XML files. There are some image textures like Ladybug, PNG, and stuff like that. And these are all things that the OSL shaders can use. Perfect. So now that we have our shaders downloaded, let's go ahead and look at how we can import them into Blender and use them in Cycles. So the first thing you should know about OSL shaders is that they only work when you're rendering on your CPU. So for all my fellow GPU rendering junkies, Unfortunately, you're going to have to change to your CPU rendering. I know it's hard. I know it's going to be it's going to be rough. But you and me, we're going to get through this together. Goodbye, GPU. Well, uh, welcome back from that overly dramatic aside. Uh, the next thing we need to do here is check this little box that says open shading language right under our CPU option here. And this will enable Cycles to recognize that the open shading language is going to be used. All right, so let's go ahead and set up a basic scene here to apply our OSL shader to. So I'm just going to apply it to a UV sphere, I guess. We'll um, crank up the... Uh, segments and rings a little bit just so it's a little bit smoother. Set, set it to smooth shading and when we press shift Z to go into rendered view we can see we have a sphere and it's pretty gray because I deleted all the lights in the scene but that's all right. I'm gonna get rid of that little side menu, split my screen by clicking and dragging these little lines in the corner and open up the node editor. Here I'm going to add a new material for our sphere. You can see it's just a basic diffuse shader hooked up to a material output. Um, and this is where we're going to go ahead and add our OSL shaders. So OSL shaders work off of the script node, which is something that not many people use. You might have seen it, um, but if you press Shift A in the node editor and come over here, you can see we have the script node. And the script node is basically just allows you to run OSL scripts in cycles. So you can see in the actual node itself, uh oh, did my mouse just die? <laughs> my mouse just died. Rest in peace, mouse. All right, well, we'll switch over to two using a trackpad for now. Um, but you can see on the script node here we have, oh gosh, this is so much harder. Um, we have a few different inputs. We have internal and external, which is referring to where the file is going to be coming from. And then we have a, uh, just a text property down here where we can choose different files to, uh, to use. So if you had a OSL script loaded into Blender's text editor, you would want to use internal, but because we're using things outside of Blender, we're going to switch it into external and click the little open folder button. Um, that way we can actually open our shader files. So mine was located on my desktop in the shaders folder. You can see here are all the different shaders that we have to work with. 
Um, so I'm going to just open up the cast iron cover, uh, open shading language thing, just because that's the first one on the list, right? You want to open up the OSL files, dot OSL, not dot blend, not dot OSO, not dot XML, dot OSL, uh, because that's an open shading language file. So you can see when we open that, all of a sudden our node gains a factor output, a position input, and a scale input as well. So let's hook up this factor output to our diffuse input over here on our uh, other shader. And if we come over here into our 3D viewport and press Shift Z, look at that. We now have a really cool texture on our sphere here, uh, which is actually, it's actually really intricate. Um, you can see that there's a lot of individual dots and a lot of cool shapes. And one of the coolest things about this actual, this texture itself is that it's all procedural. There are no image textures influencing this. This is all just hard code that worked out to create this really awesome procedural texture. Now, one thing you should be very careful with when working with OSL shaders is using HDRIs. For whatever reason, Blender absolutely cannot stand when you're using open shading language shaders and HDRIs at the same time. I'm not sure if this is just because of how OSL works, but watch what happens when I uh, do, oh gosh, my mouse pad's freaking out now. Don't die on me, mouse pad. Um, <laughs> let's see what happens if I enable an HDRI. So you can see up here at the top, updating lights, importance map. Um, we'll need to wait a while. Basically, when you enable an HDRI and you also have something going on with uh, OSL shaders, it makes Blender really rough. Cycles just cannot handle it. It takes absolutely forever to load. You can see it's been 22 seconds and we're still not even in the proper rendered view. There we go. It took about, I don't even know how long, but it did load. And you can see it does look relatively nice, but it takes that long to load in the viewport. And it would be, uh, you'd have, you've had similar uh, outcomes if you tried to render it. So really it's a little bit of a letdown because I use HDRIs for almost everything I do. Um, but you know, sometimes you have to settle with what you got. But yeah, these are some of the things that OSL shaders can do. They're not super flashy, but there are a few that do serve some very useful purposes. Anyway, I hope you guys learned something new from this video. If you did, be sure to drop a like down below and also hit the subscribe button down below. Um, but other than that, I'll see you guys next Thursday. Hey kid, you want to learn stuff about Blender? Head over to cgcookie.com and I'll hook you up.